Okay, so far we have created our nine Lambda functions through Cloud Formation Template. And then in the last lecture, we have created our state machine in step functions, organizing and orchestrating these Lambda functions together to create this state machine. So heading back to the console and we will test this state machine to see how it behaves with different inputs. So in the console, I will head to step functions. I see here the state machine I have created. So I will step into the state machine and I will create a new execution. Here it asks you for the input for this execution. Uh, and as you remember, we have to input two things, the product ID and the quantity. Three should be an acceptable quantity. So we should have inventory for uh, three items of product ID one. So this should take us to the uh, execution flow where we are going to process this order. So I will start the execution here. Choose you how the execution is going. So as you see, it's completed now and it took the path of processing the order. And in this view, you can actually view how this execution went. You can process and see every single step of this execution. So at receive order, you can see the input and the output as we defined it in our Lambda function. And for the choice, stay the same. And you see that the choice decided that this is enough inventory because inventory exists is true. So it went to the process order branch. And as you see here for each one of these, you can see the input. So the input is inventory exists true and the product ID is one. The output is process order and product ID is one. Update inventory. As we defined them in the code of the Lambda functions, they just return their name just to indicate that this is coming that this is coming from the correct lambda function and they pass through the product ID. Same here, chip order, send notification, update order. So we have moved product ID all the way from the start of the process to the end of the process. And we can also add some custom outputs from each of these steps. And this custom output is passed to the next step so let's have uh, an, another execution with a quantity that more than five. And according to our logic, we cannot accept more than five items of a product. So this should take us to the other branch of the workflow. So I will head back to process order V1 and I will create a new execution. Start execution. So as you see here, it took the other bus of declining this order because at check inventory, the input was that inventory exists is false because we don't have enough inventory for the seven items. And this took the execution to the decline bus. Also, if you head down here, you will see a full kind of a log and it logs in details of the actions with each of these steps. So for example, it looks that a state has entered and then a Lambda function is scheduled and then a Lambda function started, a Lambda function succeeded, task state exited. So it looks like four or five incidents for a single state. And if you dig into any of these, you can see the input or output and you can also see any exception in case of errors. If you get back here, you can see all of your history for each single execution. So if you run these from your application or so on, and you have some failed instances, you could come to this uh, execution and you could go inside and it will show you how this execution behaved. What was the error in case of error, you can go into the inputs and outputs and so on. So you can have a full picture about why this execution has failed. So this completes our demo on step functions. Uh, as you see here, we have created nine Lambda functions and we have orchestrated them using step functions as a workflow to do this uh, business process. So now we finished testing our state machine from the console by starting manual executions. I'm heading back to this slide to remind you of what we said about this demo. So we will integrate our state machine with ABI Gateway to expose kind of a REST endpoint to our state machine. This is more of an integration point for other systems 
to call your state machine and later on we will integrate the state machine with S3 to form a kind of a batch processing when we upload the file to the S3 bucket it will automatically trigger a lambda function that will start our state machine processing the order files that we have uploaded to this bucket so let's get into it